Welcome back guys. In the last lesson, we understood about one of the great features in all the virtualization platforms that is known as snapshots. So snapshot is available almost in every virtualized platform, whether it is VMware VirtualBox or sorry, VMware uh, Workstation or Oracle VirtualBox, even in the Zen server, ESXi, every virtualized platform will give you the capability of having snapshots. Now in this video, I'll be talking about VM clone. Assume that you want to practice something else and you want to have another machine where you want to install the CentOS. Now practically, it makes sense that you can create a new virtual machine and install the CentOS once again, but you can also clone an existing machine in VirtualBox. It is very simple, one click and you get the complete machine clone and then you can directly use that clone machine. So I'll show you how to quickly create a clone of the CentOS machine. I have this my CentOS VM right click and you choose this option clone. Now it is asking you the name of the virtual machine. I mean the name of your new virtual machine because it is going to create a clone machine. So new sent OS. Okay. And make sure you reinitialize the MAC address of all the network cards. Why? Because two machines cannot have same MAC address. So you have to reinitialize the MAC address. That means VirtualBox will allocate new MAC addresses to your network cards of the new machine. Otherwise, if you keep it same or if you don't reinitialize the MAC address, you cannot run both the VMs at the same time because I mean the same network, same MAC cards will collide. So make sure you reinitialize the MAC address. Click on next. Now you have full clone or a linked clone, right? So the linked clone will be linked to this original uh, VM, which we don't want. Always go with the full clone. Full clone is an independent clone. That means whatever you do in the new virtual machine will not impact the parent machine. So go with the full clone. Click next. Now there is a chance of creating a clone with the current state of the existing virtual machine. Whatever the current state, it, current state is, it will only clone from the current state. And if you choose everything, even the snapshots that you have taken in this parent VM, those snapshots will also get cloned. So it is better to go only with the current state of the machine because whatever existing the machine is, we want a clone of that machine. So then click on simple clone. Now you will see how easy, simple it is to have a new CentOS machine up and running within minutes. You don't really need to create a new virtual machine. You don't really need to install the CentOS. You don't really need to install the apps that you might be working again onto the new system. You don't need to fix the network, nothing. You just create a clone. The clone will be created. You create a full clone and it is so simple. Huh? There is also no limit on the number of clone you will create until unless your memory and the hard disk requirements are supported, you can create unlimited clones. Now also, you have to make sure the base memory of the parent VM, it is 4096, right? That is 4 GB. Even the clone VM will have 4 GB of RAM. When you fire both the VMs, that means they will collectively take 8 GB of your memory on your base laptop or the desktop. So you have to be very careful when you are creating clones and firing multiple VMs. Make sure you adjust the RAM so that you don't run out of RAM on your Windows machine. Because you remember I told that uh, at any given point of time, the number of VMs that are running, the total RAM that is allocated to all the running VMs should not exceed the total RAM on your desktop or the laptop. And again, you should keep 4 GB for your laptop. Don't allocate complete RAM to all the virtual machines. Because if your Windows slows down, even though if you have allocated more RAM to your virtual machines, still all the virtual machines will perform very poor. So you have to optimize the RAM. But in my case, my system is having 20 GB of RAM. So if I 
run both the VMs, this is 4 GB and the clone one would also be a 4 GB. It will take 8 GB of my RAM. So that means I still have a close to 12 GB for Windows to run, which is a healthy RAM. Now you can see my CentOS clone and I'll try to start this VM. And then you can see that simply I have the CentOS instance up and running. And I think we will also have the XYZ user because uh, in the latest clone that we have done, the XYZ user was already existing in the server. Even the users, everything will be same. You will see Arun Kumar user also. The passwords will be same because it's simply a clone. So everything will be same. Even the host name would be same. So make sure whenever you are performing a clone, Okay, so there are some post clone activities post VM clone activities. So these activities you must do in case you perform a clone in real time. First of all, change the host name because once you clone the host names will be same. That will be a problem. Change um, IP addresses. That is also important because if you don't change the IP addresses, uh, it will continue to. Uh, I think I have to close this one. Yeah, it will continue to collide with the original virtual machine. So that will be a problem. You should make sure you're changing the IP addresses. OK, so these are the two important things you have to do after you perform the clone of virtual machine. So this is the clone VM. And let me log in as a root user. So once the VM will start, we are going to test whether <clears throat> whether the XYZ user exists or not. So ID XYZ. Yes, we can see the XYZ user is existing. LS hyphen LD slash U01 slash U02. Even these two directories are available. That means when you perform a clone, you will get an exact re replica of the system and it is very simple to perform. <clears throat> 